What's up guys, it's Jeff Chan from Member Shredded and I'm here at TriTac Academy here with Professor Matthew Byers. He is a BJJ black belt, a Japanese Jiu Jitsu black belt, a strongman lifter, uh, the list goes like on. like strongman stuff. Yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a black belt in several other martial arts as well. So I just taught a seminar here and usually after teaching seminars, I spar with students and one of his students, Angel, kept landing this hammer strike. Uh, so I decided to ask Professor to teach me that series. Yeah, uh, hammer strikes are a fun, unorthodox tool that we've started to use. We've been using it for a while. Uh, it came from arm combat. If I had a stick, knife, or bump object in my hand, but then how could I take those arm skills and then transfer them to a unarmed skill? So we started playing with this method and put a little series behind it. It, when we started spar testing it, it became really effective. It actually kind of shocked us. It started creating other openings for strikes, other openings for takedowns, kicks, great on exits. And now you're starting to see it in, in, in you know, uh, the UFC and other combat. Uh, there was a Dustin Poirier fight where he was just hammering, standing. In again, clinch. Yeah, in a clinch, we call that internal hammer strike. Nangano, uh, Francis Nangano had like a big, we call external hammer strike in one of his. Or just ground and pound. Yeah, ground and pound's a great example. It's so instinctual, right? Like if you watch like kids start striking or the animal kingdom, like, no Gorilla's one's throwing thing. these clean, you know, boom, boom. There's rah, rah. We talked about instinct in your seminar last night, uh, how some of your footwork comes off of very instinctual <laughs> movements that sometimes boxing or MMA will try to change those and clean them up. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like you say, break the rules. If you know the rules, break, break the rules. rules. So I think hammer strikes kind of fall on that same, like, way of thinking. You know, they're starting to show up in MMA. Of course, it's a great way to see, but they also have that creativity that can, you know, they're built upon instincts that we can use in a variety of different ways. And it's funny because it's only official once we see UFC fighters do it. But yeah. we've seen these done several years ago. Yeah, yeah, several years, centuries ago. It's probably been in there. Yeah, yeah, let's have some fun and hammer some shit. Bam. Also, guys, Professor has a really excellent YouTube channel called TriTac Academy. Definitely check out his channel. I've linked it in the description box below. Lots of cool Japanese Jiu Jitsu and content in general. All right, Professor, give me like. Don't overload my brain. Give me four combos or four sure. things to work on. My yeah, next part. Um, first, I mean, you, you already have a beautiful cross and I'll, I don't need to teach you <laughs> the boxing or striking, but uh, the, the, I would say one right off the bat to add in with those two ascending hammers and that, that lead ascending hammer and that rear ascending hammer. I'm very confident I'm gonna land this in Oh, I, I, I know, I know you will. I, with your, with your diversity and speed and creativity, you're gonna find it a lot, I guarantee it. And it, 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 it's not, again, when people make mistakes, they kind of keep that head online. And or in, and, and at center line, they do this, and I feel like that doesn't have the essence of the technique. That I really have this, like, it's unraveling feeling, but the head pulls offline at the same time, same side on the other. So I would, and those are just great. Any, any combination you want to add after that, you want to add a cross after that, uh, a shot, a leg kick, whatever, okay. it does a great job. So I think that in itself is a great first tool to start off with. Second tool would be one of the, uh, something that's commonly called uh, the cross arm guard from boxing. Has an element of Philly shell to it. Uh, has an element of my hands down, um, or we call it like a frame four. Has some weapons application as well. Where my hands are start crossing a little bit. Like you think of like a Mayweather, yeah. you know, he's fighting that Philly shell. I get a boom, a stick. Why don't you come over here, it'll be easier. Come here. I get a stick. Then that, that, that is perfect for that internal hammer where I either could take a step foot, my right foot out a little bit, Boom, hammer down. And if you're still there, obviously you've got a big problem. With you. Getting that frame for outside that range a little bit. Boom, boom, boom. And so since you're adding a direct hammer into an internal hammer with a walkthrough, and then back to an internal hammer to the, to the face. Yeah, and that, uh, again, we talked about the common mistakes in those elbows really, there's no power there. But when you have it, I guess, part of your body, and it's like just a whip. Yeah. Now, if you are looking to get better in your sparring, I want to introduce you to my Level Up Your Sparring program. This program is for those that want to stop freezing, blinking, or flinching in sparring. Or maybe you want to get rid of your awkward and jerky movements. This program consists of over 70 live drills that will program your mind and body to not only start moving fluidly and smoothly, but to react and respond like a natural fighter. Check out the program in the link in the description box below. Number three is, is kind of a fun one. It's like kind of fucking with someone, maybe playing a high guard, and it just direct right down the nose. It plays from like being a little more open, boom, boom, you know? And, and it's just one of those like off the cuff things, guaranteed to piss someone off in a, in a fun way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like no one likes getting hit in the nose, it's the worst thing. And it's gonna give you one of those like, ah, oh, 
Okay, the kill was fastest. You know, maybe just disconnected. Oh, 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 they're kind of chasing a little bit. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. You get the feeling of pulling that hammer in. So I, I, I like those a lot. So if you, you know, um, I kind of thought about the, the jab concept. The jab to me doesn't necessarily have to be straight punch. It could be fingers. It could be a vertical fist. It could be a, 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 a turnover fist. It could be flat fist. Why can't it be hammer fist? You know, so the same, you know, I'm using it as a lead tool, but the dimension of the fist kind of changes. You know what I mean? Last one, we'll be plugging in that external hammer and hook uh, really good off a jab or a cross, I'll throw off a cross first. I'll throw that cross, boom, come in with that lead side, again, follows up the right hook. So obviously, just like with any new techniques you learn, there will be several failed attempts. I'd say I landed quite a bit for my first time ever trying these techniques and after getting only a few reps in from learning from Professor Matthew. I also know my hammer strike techniques were not that great either. I know Professor Matthew emphasized keeping those elbows tucked in, which I did not do. With that said, the feedback from my sparring partners were good. They all said they didn't know how to react to the punches and, the, and that the punches were coming from all these different angles, which really confused them. So definitely check out TriTac Academy's YouTube channel to learn these techniques in more detail from the man himself.